All right, welcome back everyone. So I wanted to um, cover something uh, that we touched on in lecture, but I want to uh, clear up some, uh, some mistakes that you may be having when you're trying to apply the projection operator, uh, or some mistakes you may be encountering when you're trying to apply the projection operator to pi type bonding situations. And so um, coming back to our trigonal planar molecule uh, sulfur trioxide, um, in the previous re video, I had uh, uh, talked about constructing the SALC orbitals or the group orbitals for the 2px orbital of the oxygen that was directed towards the sulfur center. And so what can happen now is you can have the 2py orbitals that are normal to the bond axes. We can represent these as vectors like so, that are perpendicular to, to the bond axes. Um, and so. One of the mistakes that some of you have told me that you've been encountering is that when you apply the projection operator to a test function, let's say phi a, this one here, um, you get zero uh, as a result. Um, and I want to demonstrate to you why you may be getting zero when you do this, okay? And it's particular for pi bonding. Okay, so recall that during the projection operator on a test function like phi a, um, you have to first apply a symmetry operation, that's what R symbolizes here, on our test function phi A, and then multiply it by the character chi um, of the irreducible representation. Now for this type of bonding, uh, we got the result of A2 prime plus E prime. So I've decided to take the A2 prime irreducible representation for constructing the SALC. Okay, so why, why you may be getting zeros? It may be because you're not accounting for the fact that the, uh, the orbital, once you apply the symmetry, um, not only shifts it into a new position, but can actually uh, turn it by 180 degrees its direction, okay, the phase of the orbital. So let's take a look. So if we apply E, the identity on phi A, of course, nothing happens. Phi A stays on its place. If we apply um, the uh, threefold axis, on phi A, then it takes it into the phi B position. If we apply it twice, we get to the C position. Okay. And now you see that we have three uh, two-fold axes that are normal to the three-fold axes. And I've labeled them, labeled them here in green. This is C2 going through the C position, the C2 going through A, and C2 going through B. All right. Now, if I apply this twofold axis on this orbital, what it's going to do, it's going to flip the phase of this PX, the PY orbital. In other words, this vector is now going to point in the other direction. And so when you do that, you must multiply it by a negative number, by negative one. Okay, so now it's it's not plus phi A, but minus phi A. If you wrote down plus, this is one of the reasons you're getting a zero, okay? Likewise, if you apply the C2 axis that goes through here, all right, so uh, now this orbital gets turned into the C position, but it's going to be pointing in the opposite direction, okay? So this vector will be flipped over here, but now it'll be pointing in this direction, to the left and not to the right, okay? So that's gonna be minus VC, and then similar arguments will get minus V be here, okay? Uh, sigma H is the mirror that's horizontal, which is the mirror that's on the board. So that's phi A, doesn't change anything. S3 rotates by uh, 120 degrees, reflects in the horizontal plane, so it just remains phi B, and then doing it twice brings me to that position, so it's phi C. All right, now we have to, again, take into account fact that these vertical mirrors, like the two-fold axes, could potentially flip that orbital's direction, okay? So if we make sigma v the mirror plane that's uh, coincident with the two-fold axes here, what will happen is this uh, phase will be reflected into this position and this phase into that position. In other words, the mirror plane that goes through here is going to flip this vector that way. So again, we'll get minus p a here. Um, and then if we do a mirror plane through the B position, this orbital gets reflected here, but now it's pointing in the opposite direction. So again, we have P 
phi c. And then for similar argument uh, reasons, we're going to get phi b here. And so now we should get um, something that doesn't cancel out. Okay, so you should not get a zero now. So now it's phi a plus phi a plus phi a plus phi a. In other words, all the negatives are multiplied with another negative, and so you get the result of four phi a plus four phi b plus four phi c. And in the previous video, I showed you how to normalize this wave function so that in the end, again, your SALC, your SALC uh, wave function for, uh, for A2 prime, A2 prime should be equal to one over root three P A plus P B plus P C. Okay. And um, that's how you treat one of these uh, salks for pi type bonding.